What's going on guys, Marco here with 4 for 4 and I am bringing you the perfect pick for every round of your draft. So let's kick it off with round one. Who should you be targeting? Now, obviously if you're picking one or two, this doesn't really apply to you, but truly I think if you're not picking one or two, the best option to pick in your drafts, and I know some people are already gonna be mad at me, but the answer is Travis Kelsey. When it comes to positional dominance, there is no replacing a Travis Kelsey. Kelsey averaged 1.3 more targets per game than the next best tight end, but he turned those 1.3 targets into six more points per game than TJ Hawkinson. That's over 100 points on the season. The Chiefs wide receiver room is still largely an uninspiring group of players that you really can't trust. You can't rely on to stay healthy, to catch the football, to be good at all. So it's going to be Travis Kelsey's season again. You know, he has been a tight, the tight end one overall in six of the last seven seasons. And that is not an accident. Kelsey is heading into another tight end one overall season. And you do not have to think about the position for the rest of the draft take Travis Kelsey in the first round if you're really fighting me on Travis Kelsey the other two guys that I think you should take Christian McCaffrey Tyreek Hill Bijan Robinson those are really the only other guys I'm considering there just on positional value now let's go to the second pick for me the answer is I'm on Ross St. Brown if it was up to me if I'm drafting at the end of the first round I'm on Ross St. Brown wouldn't be there in the second round but if you look at ESPN ADP he is commonly there in the second round. The sun god, Amon Ross St. Brown, is the safest pick at the wide receiver position that is not named Justin Jefferson or Jamar Chase. That's just the reality of it. I would take him probably as my third wide receiver off the board, and people might not like that, but that's the truth. Jamison Williams is dealing with a six-game suspension. TJ Hawkinson, who we just talked about, is now a Minnesota Viking. St. Brown is the only high-volume target earner returning to the Lions offense. Obviously, they have Jameer Gibbs, they have David Montgomery, they have Sam Laporta, but early in the season, St. Brown should be a lock for nine targets per game as his floor, which is virtually unheard of. He saw three games last year where he's had less than nine targets and he was injured in all of those games. He played, but he was injured. He has a shot to be the wide receiver one overall. That is in his range of outcomes. If he gets used downfield more, if he gets used in the red zone more, and you just took him in the second round, you will not be upset no matter what with St. Brown in the second round. If you're looking elsewhere, you know, I like Jalen Waddle. I like DK Metcalf. Let's keep moving. Third round is here, and the guy I want you guys to target, if he's there, I don't know where you're drafting, he might not be available there, but according to ESPN ADP, he should be, and that is wide receiver for the New Orleans Saints, Chris Olave. Now, he showed us that he is here to stay last season. He averaged 2.42 yards per route run. He averaged over a 27% target rate as a rookie, which is just unheard of. I mean, there's been less than 22 wide receivers in the NFL to do that. Now he gets the upgrade of Andy Dal from Andy Dalton to Derek Carr, and Olave is heading toward a huge breakout season. And adding a player like Olave in uh, to your team in the third round just doesn't seem fair, especially in PPR league where there is absolutely nothing better than these phenom uh, phenomenal elite pass catchers. Some alternatives if you can't get Chris Olave, I like Devonta Smith quite a bit, and I like Travis Etienne quite a bit. Those are two guys that I would totally target in the third round if Chris Olave isn't there. My fourth round pick is Jameer Gibbs. Now, some of you might be saying, there's no way he's gonna make it to the fourth round. There's no way he's gonna make it to the fourth round. I'm using ESPN ADP for this. He is commonly available in the late third, early fourth round. So I'm gonna put him in the fourth round because we're talking about the best player at every round. And he has been in the fourth round, uh, at least on ESPN. And so when it comes to first round draft picks at the running back position, they are historically players that you want to draft for fantasy football. That's just what history of the NFL draft and fantasy production has told us. In 2023, we were gifted with Bijan Robinson and Jameer Gibbs in the first round, which is awesome. Both should be RB1s this year, but only Gibbs has the ability to actually be a true league winner for you because Bijan's going in the first round. I talked about him, you know, in, in the first round seg part of this video. B. John Robinson can't really be a league winner if he's being drafted at his ceiling. Jameer Gibbs is going two to three rounds later. He's going in that third, fourth round area. He can actually be a league winner at the running back position. Now, I don't always go early quarterback, but we've seen, oh, you know, last season showed us there is a huge break in these quarterbacks when you leave that elite tier. And you might be thinking, Justin Fields isn't in that elite tier, but the answer is 
yes, he is in that elite tier. He was already QB6 in points per game last season. If he even has a marginal improvement in his play, QB6 is probably his floor. This team improved their offensive line. They added DJ Moore. They have now a healthy Chase Claypool, a healthy Darnell Mooney, a hopefully healthy healthy Cole Komet. Justin Fields is going to ball out in 2023. He's an elite rushing quarterback that he showed us last year. One of the best historically to ever do it. But he was actually drafted on his merit as a passer in college. He is going to put the league on notice in 2023. And you're acquiring him most likely at his floor in the fourth round of your draft. Now, some options here for Justin Fields. If he's gone, if you're not all in on Justin Fields, go for the other Justin, Justin Herbert. Or if you really don't want to go quarterback, I really like Amari Cooper in the fifth round. He's a wide receiver value that's being slept on. He was a top 12 wide receiver last year, and he's likely to be in that top 20, top 15 this year uh, with Deshaun Watson in year two for the Browns. I am saying you need to be drafting running back for the Buffalo Bills, James Cook. Now, the best way to win at the running back position, the best way is to focus on high-powered offenses and running backs with versatility. That's James Cook. In 2022, Cook was third in yards per touch and he was first in breakaway run rate. The concerns about Damian Harris joining the team are real. Damian Harris is going to vulture touchdowns. He's going to be in on early downs more than we'd like, probably. It's going to be a little bit annoying at times. But... If we look at what James Cook has done in the preseason so far, he has dominated the snaps with the starters, over 70% of the snaps with the starters. And if we look at his week two usage in the preseason, he saw over 70% of the rush attempts while also having 70% route participation. That is exactly what you want to see from a running back, a young running back, and a potential breakout candidate running back. He is one of my favorite values at the entire running back position and adding him nearly 70, you know, 65, 75 picks into the draft feels really unfair to the rest of your league. He is a league winner. I'm going to plant my flag on that. If you're not into James Cook there, I that's fine. I understand there's concerns. You can go for a guy like Alexander Madison, who should probably dominate most of the touches for the Vikings, maybe some less up, less upside in that offense, but He's a running back option, and if you want to go wide receiver, I really like Terry McLaurin at that point if he is healthy. Obviously, he's dealing with some injury right now. we got to see what the timeline is going to be on that, but if he's healthy, I'm fine picking him here. If he's not, you can probably get him a couple rounds later. All right, we are now in round seven, and I am going with wide receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers, George Pickens. He's one of my breakout wide receivers this year. Really, he's been one of the most polarizing players in all of fantasy football. He posted over 800 yards and four touchdowns as a rookie, and he did it with a rookie quarterback. He looks like he's primed for a huge year two in Pittsburgh. And I'm a Deontay Johnson believer. I'll say that right now. I don't think you don't you need to pick a side here. I think they're both going to be good because the reality is Kenny Pickett has actually looked much better in this preseason than I ever expected to. I'm a Kenny Pickett doubter and he has started to pique my interest of maybe he could be a legit NFL quarterback and I think he could potentially support both of these guys. And you get to add Pickens right now in the seventh round, which means he's probably gonna be like a flex for you, maybe even a bench person, a bench player, depending on you know how deep your rosters are. In the seventh round, I am 100% happy with taking George Pickens. All right, we are almost there. We're going to round eight and I am taking one of my favorite running backs. You might think the ADP is off, but this is ESPN ADP. We're staying consistent with ESPN ADP. J.K. Dobbins is available in ESPN leagues in round eight. This is obviously full PPR leagues, but early in his career, J.K. Dobbins has dealt with injury. Primarily, he's been stuck recovering from this torn ACL over the last year and a half or so, or, you know, just over a year. But last season, even it being just year one after that ACL, he led all running backs in fantasy points over expected per game. He averaged five and a half yards per carry, and he was one of the most efficient runners in the NFL. Now he's another year removed from that ACL injury. He's got Todd Munkin, his new OC. I've talked about him in a number of videos now calling the plays for the Baltimore Ravens. And when we look at what Munkin has done for running backs, as well as just a complete offense, he's given running backs at, you know, his, his workhorse running backs are likely to see 15 plus opportunities a game. That's a, a point in Dobbins' favor because volume's definitely a question for him. 
but he's also utilized them more in the passing game than previous OCs, you know, like the Nick Chubbs of the world. He he gave Nick Chubb his highest target season, and I think we're likely to see that in 2023 for a fully healthy J.K. Dobbins. If you don't love Dobbins there, I think David Montgomery could be a potential league winner, and I think he's also available in that round. And I really like DeAndre Swift, and DeAndre Swift is likely available there too. I like D Dobbins over both those guys, but I would probably pick them in that order if you're like, which running back do I go with if I'm not in on Dobbins? I go Montgomery and then Swift. Round nine, I am going with Jackson Smith and Jigba. Now I know he was injured, he's got the wrist surgery, he might miss week one, might be you know slowly brought on. We're looking at maybe like a week three return. I'm still okay taking him in round nine. The ADP is probably going to dip. You could probably take him in round 10 or 11. But like I said, I'm okay taking him in round nine. In this year's draft, he was you know, far and away the best wide receiver prospect in the class. Elite route running, body control, hands. He was at the top or near the top in all three of those categories. And of course, he's joining a crowded wide receiver room with DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. So target competition is going to be an obstacle, especially early in the season. That being said, this might be, and it's a very talented wide receiver room, it might be the least competitive wide receiver room that Jackson Smith and Jigba's ever been a part of. In college at Ohio State, he competed with Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, Marvin Harrison Jr., and, you know, and plenty of other players, Jameson Williams for a time even. And Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave are two guys who are, you know, top 10 wide receivers projected for 2023. Marvin Harrison Jr., when he comes out next year, will probably immediately jump into that conversation. In dynasty circles, people are clamoring over this guy, and they should be, even if it's a slow burn for Jackson Smith and Jigba, the juice is going to be worth the squeeze here. Again, I promise you, you may find that you drafted a late season league winner at the wide receiver position. Once he gets healthy, once he gets on the field, he is going to command targets in this offense. If you're not in on JSN here, that's okay. If his ADP drops and you want to wait a little bit, that's okay. Two guys I like are running backs, not wide receivers, but Khalil Herbert and AJ Dillon are decent values here. I do think Khalil Herbert ends up being the backup, but early season, he should definitely lead the way. And then AJ Dillon is going to be AJ Dillon. He's going to be, you know, a low end RB2 with some RB with some high end RB2 weeks in there. Both those guys are kind of in the same vein. Uh, and I like both of them at the running back position. Round 10, I am going Jordan Addison. I'm going another rookie wide receiver. And really, this is where I start looking at upside. And then after this, I only go upside. ADP should mainly be out the window once you get to round 10 and below. Just go get your guys. And Jordan Addison is another young player that I am all in on this year. When we look at the marriage of talent and situation, it's really hard to argue drafting anyone but Jordan Addison in your 10th round. Kirk Cousins last season uh, had the most pass attempts of his career. The Vikings were fourth in pass attempts in the NFL, and they lost Adam Thielen. They lost Dalvin Cook. Kevin O'Connell's year two with this offense. Kirk Cousins' year two in this offense. Addison is stepping into an enormous opportunity, an enormous role as the wide receiver two for the Vikings. Even if his combine numbers didn't wow you, he has a chance to lead all rookies in receiving production. I actually have him as my highest rated rookie wide receiver for 2023 after the Jackson Smith and Jigba injury. If Addison is gone or you don't want to go Addison, I think Jahan Dotson is a great pick here or Traylon Burks. Traylon Burks, again, he might have a little bit lower ADP because he's also dealing with injury, but both guys should be solid at the wide receiver position for 2023 and can bring value once they're healthy. All right, I'm going to rapid fire through a couple late round targets at each position. When I look at quarterback, I like Kirk Cousins. He's my dark horse to lead the NFL in passing yards. Anthony Richardson, the rushing upside is going to float this guy. He's going to be a top 15 QB most likely in 2023. And then dark horse, I like Geno Smith. You know, obviously they added JSN once he's healthy. He's got tons of weapons to work with. They added Zach Charbonnet as well. I think Geno Smith Smith is going to, you know, flirt with that top 15, top 12 even quarterback production in 2023, even if he's unexciting. Running back, guys I've talked about a ton, so I'll just keep it brief. Antonio Gibson, Roshan Johnson, Zach Charbonnet, Tyler Algier, Tank Bigsby, love all those guys. Wide receiver, we got Zay Flowers, Quentin Johnston, Elijah Moore, Jamison Williams. When he comes back, he's going to command targets like most likely. I'm not all in on the talent and just if the Lions are really in on him either, but he's going to get on the field, hopefully, as soon as, you know, week seven, eight, and I think that's going to be a huge bump in his value. And then Jaden Reed, I think he's going to be the next Amon Ross St. Brown. He's a huge value at the very, very end of your drafts at wide receiver. He's a guy I'm not leaving a draft without. Tight end, you got Dalton Kincaid, you got Cole Komet, 
you got Sam Laporta, you got Jawan Johnson. All those guys, I think, are going to have some tight end one weeks. And Dalton Kincaid and Cole Komet, um, I have actually as tight end ones in, in 2023. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if there's a guy you missed. If you've got players you want to draft and reach on, drop your questions below. I'll I'll answer every single question that we get. Don't forget to head over to 444. Use the promo code YouTube. Save some money. Get access to premium content, customized content. And don't forget to be kind, do good. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. We'll see you next time. Peace.